Senator Eric Schmidt, a member of the Senate Armed Services, Commerce, Science and Transportation Committees. He is also a member of the Joint Economic Committee. Uh, Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be with you again, Maria. So on that comment that Ted Cruz just made about Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer tweeted out our interview yesterday. And uh, when I spoke with uh, uh, Ted Cruz on Sunday, and Schumer tweets it out, and he says this, Senator Cruz is the one who wants to do nothing on the border. Last week, he voted against a bipartisan bill to strengthen border security. So he's basically using that failed Senate border bill as reason to blame it on the Republican senator. Your reaction? It's ridiculous. That border bill uh, took us backwards. Um, it actually created an express lane for these asylum officers to grant citizenship at the border, stripped Texas, a state that traditionally dealt with these issues from, from jurisdiction, and moved it to the D.C. Court of Appeals. There's a bunch of reasons why that bill was a disaster. And the truth is, Joe Biden has every authority right now to close the border, Berea. You and I were down there a couple years ago when I was attorney general. We saw the human trafficking. Joe Biden could, you know, reinstitute all of the things that President Trump was doing under existing law that exists existed then, uh, he just doesn't want to do it. They're the open borders party. And so uh, they're sort of unapologetic about it. And this is, you know, you know, making that claim against Senator Cruz is, is ridiculous. And the American uh, people know that. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I remember when we were there at the border together, you were with a group of AGs, attorneys general across the country, and I was there reporting on what you all were doing. And at that time, we were averaging about 6,000, 7,000 people a day coming through the southern border. It has risen all the way up to 10,000, sparking Governor Abbott to put that wire fencing in. Now it's moving more toward California. I want to get your take on what happens with this Mayorkas, uh, th this Mayorkas impeachment in the House. Does it just die in the Senate, or will they actually have the backbone to do a trial? Well, I hope we do. We should. Uh, I'm a signatory of a letter um, you know, to our leadership saying we should have a trial. I mean, I think all of this stuff needs to have full viewing in front of the American people because uh, Mjorkas and company, they are simply ignoring existing law. I'll give you an example, parole authority. Uh, paroling millions of people into the United States, and we don't know where they're at, or maybe they have a court date sometime in the 2030s, literally, that they'll never show up for. Those are supposed to be individual, individualized adjudications, one by one, not because you're from a particular classification or a particular country. And so these are the kind of things that I think ought to be, you know, uh, litigated, quite frankly, in an impeachment trial. So I hope we stand up. Um, the American people understand what this is. We've never seen anything like this, Maria. No country in the history of the world has willingly ceded its borders for this level of illegal immigration. It's nuts. And so, I, you know, again, Joe Biden could close the border tomorrow if he wanted to. He doesn't want to. Um, York is, uh, you know, part and parcel of all of this and making decisions that violate the law. Well, we've got new reports that shows that the U.S. is now fearing that Moscow might put a nuclear weapon into space. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken even asking China and India for help in talking with Russia about this. Uh, I, I, okay, that's a whole other conversation, the fact that the U.S. is asking Russia for help. But Florida Congressman Michael Waltz joined me on Sunday Morning Futures to discuss the severity of this threat. Watch this. This threat is so serious, so grave. If this weapon is allowed uh, uh, to fully deploy, uh, it could completely blind our economy. It would take out our GPS. It could blind our military. Wow. Uh, it is incredibly serious. It's a weapon of mass destruction, not just us, countries all over uh, the world. Uh, wow. And what the fear is that Putin has calculated we are far more dependent on space than he is, so that perhaps this would be at his advantage or that he could use it as a, as a serious uh, deterrence to keep us from doing what we need to do. Your thoughts on the severity of this and how important it is? It is. It's critical. Um, and so I served on the Armed Services Committee and also on the Space and Science Subcommittee of the Commerce Committee. So we see both the, the military side of this in space and also the commercial side. We need to do everything we can to be the leader in space, the uncontested leader, for a bunch of reasons. I mean, they're talking about mining asteroids in space, permanent settlements on the moon. Why is that stuff important? Because what we might discover could be the breakthrough event on some super stealthy material, whatever. There's a lot of reasons why we need to be in space 
space and winning. Uh, the first shots fired in the next big war will be in space. And so I think we actually do need to have a national effort to win. But going to China and asking them for help is insane. Uh, China is our chief adversary. The 21st century, Maria, will be, whoever will be defined by who wins this great powers competition between America and communist China. All yeah. these other issues around the world, it's not to say we shouldn't have a debate about them, but, fa but fall way back in the priority for the United States of America. So if there's two things we want to do for American national security, we would secure our southern border. You just saw the people being interviewed from places, you know, Middle East and China. Secure our southern border and win the future against communist China. Cozying up to them right now by the Biden administration is a total miscalculation of what this relationship is. So then why is a Chinese national on the board of the Federal Elections Commission in San Francisco? OK, I've been railing about this this morning because I cannot believe yeah. that this is allowed. Kelly Wong is not an American citizen. She cannot legally vote in this country. And yet she was just sworn into the board in San Francisco of the San Francisco Elections Commission. To, to add insult to injury, they did the whole swearing in ceremony in Chinese. She says, oh, I'm not great in English, so let's do it in Chinese. Oh, OK. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. But I think... If you want to understand this, Maria, you have to appreciate the fact that these people view themselves as global citizens. They don't. They view our borders as arbitrary lines on a map. They think anybody should get here for any particular reason and, and be granted amnesty. That's what they believe. So it used to be a time where they were just writing white papers from some liber liberal think tank. The problem now is they have completely populated the spaces that people make decisions, including the White House. And so now we have this big problem. And so I think the American people need to stand up in November. Uh, we need to do everything we can right now to sort of hold uh, Mayorkas responsible and Joe Biden responsible. But this can't be the way that we go. This is how yeah. civilizations, um, you know, ultimately lose their way. And, and well, the idea of having an open border where anybody can come here from anywhere uh, without asking any questions is nuts. Well, we know that the border is the number one existential threat because we don't know who's coming in. But House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Turner is facing criticism for making the space threat the number one issue. Uh, you know that. Texas Congressman Keith Self was on this program yesterday, and he also is wondering why Mike Turner brought this to the urgency level that he did. Watch this. It was a leak that was designed to convince the members of Congress uh, that we had to do something, that we had to make have a clean reauthorization of Section 702. This should not have been. I was in code word programs in the pro, in the Pentagon. I can't even name the, the programs, much less what they did. That's the level we're talking about here. This was a fireable offense by Mike Turner. Uh, this is unconscionable. It is probably illegal. Senator, I understand that this is a very critical issue and we do not want uh, Russian weapons in space. However, was this urgency to tell the public about it an effort to get the Congress to approve the money to Ukraine? I mean, I don't know. I can't really speak to his motivations. I will just tell you, I mean, I'm briefed all the time on the Armed Services Committee of things that would scare the bejesus out of you. Um, okay. And, um, you know, so, but I, so I can't speak to his motivations. I do think the space element's a part of it, but uh, okay. we need to be focused on China. And sending $61 billion to Ukraine when we don't secure our own southern border is crazy. And, and, and on China, with those Chinese nationals coming in, 20,000 just since October 1st, on top of 24,000 uh, the year earlier, do you think they're being directed by Xi Jinping to come to America, to settle here, to become saboteurs when and if they need to? It's very possible. I mean, look, they're, they're, they're flooding our borders with fentanyl, killing Americans. Right. Uh, China's, playing, China's playing the long game here, Maria. You, you and I both know that, and we got to take them seriously. All right, Senator, thanks very much for being here this morning. A lot that we threw at you. We appreciate your time. Eric Schmidt joining us this morning in Missouri. We'll be right back.